Hello everyone, welcome to Algebra 2A Live Week 9 video lesson over exponents and polynomials. For Week 9, for this assignment, here's what we got going on. Read the chapter sections, go over the recorded video, do the paper pencil problems, and you got your weekly test. Make sure you're keeping up with all that. For our objectives, what are we learning this week in Algebra 2? I want you guys to learn how to recognize and factor whoops, the sum and difference of two cubes. So we're gonna go back to doing a little more factoring. We're gonna factor polynomials by grouping. We've already done a little bit of this, but now we're gonna get outside of just quadratics and factor bigger polynomials. We're gonna learn how to factor polynomials that may be bigger than quadratic, but are still in quadratic form. And lastly, we get to learn how to divide. We're gonna divide polynomials losing long division, and we're gonna divide polynomials using synthetic division. All right, so some fun stuff here. There's getting into some newer things working with polynomials. I uh, hope you guys are getting ready to take some good notes and some good examples. Okay, so up to this point, we've worked with exponents. We've been talking about polynomials. We've learned how to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials together, but we haven't touched division yet. That's kind of the whole focus of this lesson, this whole week, is getting understanding how to take polynomials and break them down. So here's the first case, sum and difference of two cubes. If you have something, a polynomial, again, in the form of a cubed plus b cubed, or if we have a polynomial in the form of a to the third minus b to the third, those actually factor down pretty nicely as well. Again, if you can see it in this form, it actually turns and factors into a polynomial, two polynomials like that. It looks really messy, but I'll go over an example and just help show you kind of how it gets put together. I don't expect you to memorize these formulas, but have them written down, have them handy, so you can refer to them when you recognize this kind of scenario going on. Let's take a look at an example of that. So let's factor this following polynomial. We've got 125 minus 216 times x to the third. So before we dive in, we need to kind of recognize, okay, I've got x to the third, so there's something cubed there. Are 125 and 216 things that are cubed? Well, if I check 5 to the third power, it equals 125. So I can rewrite 125 as 5 to the third power. 216 is 6 to the third power. 6 times 6 times 6. And then x to the third is obviously the third power. So we have a difference of 2 cubes, two things being cubed going on. So when we go pull out our formula, I'm going to use this one right here, difference of two cubes. So it is a minus b in parentheses multiplied by a squared plus a times b plus c squared. So it's a minus and a plus and a plus. It's usually the signs that are a hard thing to keep track of. Let's go back and let's do this now. So in my formula, I'm going to write that formula down it's gonna factor into a minus b times a squared plus a times b plus b squared. Now what are all these a's and b's? So if I remember, this was five cubed minus six times x cubed. Let's rewrite it like this way. So in the formula, when it's a to the third minus b to the third, to equal that, my value for a is gonna be five. I'm taking five to the third power. So I'm gonna put five in for all these values for a. Now my value for b is six times x, 6x. X. That's all being taken to the third power. So I'm gonna put 6x in place for all the values for b. All right, so now let me change colors and let's rewrite, let's start working this thing out here. So I've got five minus six times x multiplied by five squared plus five times six x plus six x squared. All right, now let's simplify some of this down, right? We can do that. 
So 5 minus 6x, that stays the same. Not really anything to simplify there. 5 squared turns into 25. 5 times 6x equals 30x. And 6x squared equals 36x squared. All right, we are done. There are no like terms to combine. This is my final answer, factors into all this. And we took one polynomial and we factored into two polynomials, recognizing the special case of a sum and difference of cubes. All right. We also have factoring by grouping. We've done this before. We used it as a method of factoring out quadratics, but we can use it for larger polynomials as well. So let's do an example here. We're going to factor this polynomial. More than that, we're actually going to solve the following polynomial equation using factoring by grouping. So I've got 9x cubed minus 54x squared minus 4x plus 24. And I want to know well, what values of x make all this thing equal to 0. All right, well, let's do some factoring by grouping and see if we can figure it out. The first thing I need to do is rewrite everything as addition. So I'm going to write it as 9x cubed plus negative 54x squared plus negative 4x plus 24. And what that does is when I group, I'm not going to run into problems uh, splitting my groups into two groups and distributing and negatives and all that. So factoring by grouping, I'm going to factor by first grouping into two groups. So let's take my four terms. Let's put the first two together and the second two together. Now I've got two groups and I'm looking for common factors in each term in both groups. So 9x cubed minus 54x squared. What's in common there? A 3. 3 goes into 9 and 3 goes into 54 as well as an x squared. I'm going to factor the 3x squared out. And what do I've got left after I divide all that? 9 divided by 3 is 3. x cubed divided by x squared leaves just an x. 54 divided by 3 is 2018. And x squared divided by x squared. At this point, what's funny is 3 and 18, I actually did not factor out the biggest thing. I should have factored out a 9. So let me go backtrack here. Let's switch back to blue. Let's factor out a 9. That's my greatest factor. I want to pull out the biggest amount of stuff that I can. So let's factor out a 9. If I do that, what do I have left? We'll just re-scratch that. So now I've factored out 9x squared. And after I factor out the 9 and not just a 3, now I've got x minus 6. That's a little bit better. So make sure you're factoring out the greatest common factor when you do that. I gave you a nice example of messing that up. All right. Now we look at the second group over here. And I want to make sure to factor out a common factor and see if I can get an x minus 6 left there too. What I'm noticing though is I have a minus 4 and then a plus 24, where here I had a plus for my first term and a negative second term. So obviously they have a 4 in common, but I'm also going to factor out a negative so I get my signs to line up right. So now we've got plus, I'm going to go down here, plus negative 4, we factored that out. And what do we have left after we factor out the negative 4? 4 divided by 4 is 1, and so I have 1x. 24 divided by negative 4 is negative 6, that's still equal to 0. And now I'm getting all excited because I have common binomials. I have x minus 6 for this whole mess of stuff, and I have x minus 6 for this whole mess of stuff. So I can continue factoring by grouping. I can factor out the x minus 6 terms in common. And... What I have left inside is 9x squared minus 4. And that equals 0. Okay, we just did factoring by grouping, but now I'm noticing, hey, 
This looks like something familiar, right? It's a difference of two squares. That's what we did in a few weeks ago when we did all the factoring quadratics. That turns into 3x minus 2 times 3x plus 2. So let's factor that down. I still got x minus 6. And it's finally fully factored. And the awesomeness of having it fully factored is that we can tell the solutions. If I make x equal 6, that's going to turn the whole thing into 0. If I make x equal to 2 thirds, 2 thirds times 3 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, so that's another solution. And if I make x negative 2 thirds, there are three solutions that I can put in for x that will make the whole thing equal to 0. You can check that by substituting in and calculating it out. You can check it using our decimals calculator. But that's how you use factoring by grouping. We can use it on these bigger polynomials, even if they have x cubes and x squares and all of that. Okay, let's take a look at factoring polynomials in quadratic form. Here I've got 12x to the fifth plus 38x cubed plus 16x. And it's factorable based on what we know. But let's first... I noticed there's some things in common. Let's factor out what's in common here. They each have a common factor of x. And they each have a common factor of 2. I can divide that out from each of those three terms. So what do we got left? We take out the 2x. We have left, switch colors, 12 divided by 2 is 6x to the fourth plus 19x squared plus 8. Now, this is what we would call in quadratic form. Remember, quadratic form is ax squared plus bx plus c. This is similar because we have something x to the fourth plus x squared plus a constant. So it's quadratic form in that it's like doubled. My x to the first x squared, it's the similar to x to the squared x to the fourth. Uh, it goes from like 0, 2, 4 is the same sort of proportion as 0, 1, and 2. So I can use all my similar factoring techniques. So let's take a look at factoring down 6x to the 4th plus 19x squared plus 8. We're going to factor that down into two binomials. All right. So let's look for common factors. I know to get 6x. I either have 1 times 6 or I have 2 times 3. To get 8, I either have 1 times 8 or 2 times 4. I'm going to go, let's just try 3x squared times 2x squared. I know that has to work out. We're just going to do some guess and check. We're going to try and get it to factor out here. Next thing I need to figure out what here. Um, if I'm going to try the 2 and the 4 first. If I have 3 times 2, that's 6, plus 2 times 4, that's 8, that's 14. That doesn't quite get me what I need. So if I have the, I'm just processing this out loud. If I do the 4 here, that's 12. I don't think this actually works. So if I have the 4 here and the 2 here, I get 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 times 2 is 4 more. So that's 16. That doesn't get me to the 19. If I do 8 and 1, there we go. This is, this is what I want. So watch what happens here. If I put the 8 right here. And if I put the 1 right here, there's 8 times 1 to give me 8. But now I've got 3 times 1 is 3, plus 8 times 2 is 16, and 3 plus 16 gives me the 19. So I'm feeling really happy about guessing and checking. Hopefully you kind of followed my logic there and tried to process it. Basically I picked 3 and 2, and then I, in my head, looked for combinations of 2 and 4, 4 and 2, 8 and 1, 1 and 8, until I found the ones that I knew would add up. And here's how we can check it out. Again, you can multiply. 3x squared times 2x squared gives you 6x to the fourth. 
3x squared times 1 gives you 3x squared. 8 times 2x gives you 16x squared. And 8 times 1 gives you 8. And there's my middle terms that add up to 19x squared. So when it's all said and done, this thing factors into 2x. We factored that out first. Times 3x squared plus 8 times 2x squared plus 1. And we factored the binomial, or sorry, the trinomial into three different things. So that's factoring in quadratic form. There we just covered sections 9.1, 9.2, and 9.3. So to wrap it up, we have the ability to factor polynomials that are quadratic, but we can also now look at polynomials that are more than quadratic. We just factored some that had x to the third power and x to the fourth power, and even one that had x to the fifth power. So factoring is a good way sorry, to undo multiplication. However, it only works for polynomials that are able to be factored. Sometimes you just get in, you try and factor, and it won't go anywhere. So we also have the ability to divide polynomials. That's what we're going to work on for the next two examples, is look at methods to take any two polynomials and divide them. Some will divide nicely, leaving no remainder. Some will divide uh, messy, leaving a nice remainder. So a quick review, what do we talk about? When we talk about division, long division, let's take a number like this. Let's go 23 divided by 3. This is long division, right? 3 does not go into 2, but it does go into 23 7 times. 7 times 3 is 21. Subtract the difference, because I want to see what's left over. 3 minus 1 is 2. 3 does not go into 2. I could use a decimal, but at this point we'd say we, 3 goes into 7 times with the remainder of 2. Or we could say 3, 23 divided by 3 equals 7 with a remainder of 2 thirds. So either way, this is long division, right? We can do the same. We, so we know it with numbers, we've done that before growing up, but we can do the same thing with polynomials. All right, here we go. Let's work through a long division example here. We're going to divide the following polynomials using our method of long division. So how does that look? Well, we've got 3x to the 4th minus 5x to the 3rd minus 21x squared minus 30x plus 8. So I'm going to write that out here. 3x to the 4th minus 5x to the third, minus 21x squared, minus 30x, plus 8. And we're going to divide all of that. So I put my little long division symbol. All of it gets divided by x minus 4. Okay, so there we go. We got it all set up. Now we start the process of long division. Uh, um, is, <laughs> I can't switch my color around. That's annoying. Um, go to PowerPoint. All right. So anyways, what I'm going to do is, again, I want to see fit x minus 4 inside this polynomial. And I go term by term by term to do that. So first of all, I just focus on this 3x to the 4th. That's the first term, so largest. And I look to say, okay, x minus to the 4 what do I have to multiply that by to turn it into 3x to the fourth? So I focus on this x. x times what makes 3 times x to the fourth? Well, I need to multiply it by a 3. 3 times x gives me 3x, but I also need to multiply it by x to the third to get 3x to the third times one more x gives me 3x to the fourth. So there we go. We focus just on the first terms. I want to multiply them to make them the same. So now what happens? Now I multiply 3x to the third by the x to get 3x to the fourth down here. I'm going to find the remainder. But I have two terms, so I have to also multiply 3x to the third by the negative 4. So that makes negative 12 x to the third. I'm going to make sure I keep my x to the fourths in a column and my x to the thirds in a column because I can only add or subtract like terms. I've multiplied it by both terms and now I want to see 
what the difference is. Because I multiplied them in the way to get them to be equal, I always want to make sure that these add up to zero. Every time I do this process, I want to add those to zero and find the leftovers. Now we have negative 5x to the cubed minus negative 12x cubed. The two negatives make it plus, so it ends up equaling negative 5x cubed plus 12x gives me a positive 7x to the third. Okay, that's our first round. Now, instead of focusing on 3x to the fourth, I want to focus on this 7x to the third. I'm going to bring down this negative 21x squared. And what do I now multiply by to turn x minus 4 into 7x cubed? Well, to get x to turn into 7x, I need to multiply by positive 7. To get x to the first to turn into x to the third, I have to multiply by x squared. Now I do the same process. 7x squared times the first term here, x, gives me 7x cubed, which is what I want, right? I want these two things, so when I subtract them, I get 0. But now I have 7x squared times the negative 4 is going to give me negative 28x squared. Now i got to find the difference. I subtract. 7x cubed minus 7x cubed gives me 0. Good. i got zeros. I'm rolling along. Now i got negative 21x squared minus negative 28. Turns into plus 28x squared. That's going to give me another 7x squared. Positive. Do the process again. I have an x. I want to multiply it to get 7x squared. So I need to multiply it by 7x. 7x times x gives me 7x squared. Those are going to subtract to 0, but I also have 7x times negative 4, which is negative 28x. I need to bring down the negative 30x because I want to find the difference. Subtract them. I get 0 for 7x squared minus 7x squared, but now I have negative 30x minus negative 28. So there's plus 28, and I end up with negative 2x. Finally, I bring down my plus 8, and I have one last thing to see, x minus 4. I want this x to be the same as negative 2x. I need to multiply by negative 2. Negative 2 times x gives me negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 4 gives me plus 8. I want to find the difference. And this is nice, it just all turns into zero. So there is no remainder. These polynomials divide evenly. And in fact, all of this divided by this equals 3x to the third plus 7x squared plus 7x minus 2. Another way to think about it, and again, I'm sorry I can't switch colors for some reason on this slide, is I can multiply this back together. If I took x minus 4 and multiplied it with what I got right here, 3x to the third plus 7x squared plus 7x minus 2, Guess what all that would turn into? If I did the distributive property, if I multiplied it all out, it would turn back into this. So it's sort of a way to factor. You can use long division to help break things up. We factored it out into there. Hopefully that helps. Uh, there's an example of long division. Again, this one divided out nicely. There was no remainder because we had a zero at the end. Besides long division, however, again, it's a bear because it takes a long time to write it out, so we call it long division. Another way to divide is by using synthetic division. Synthetic division works if you're dividing only by a linear factor. So, for example, if you have x minus 5 or you have x plus 2, there's no x squareds or x cubes. You're just dividing by linear factors. It'll always work, and it's a little bit shorter. It's kind of a shortcut way to do all the division. Let's take a look at an example of synthetic division. Synthetic division. We're going to divide the following using synthetic division. 
Okay. Let's set this up. So it takes a little bit of work to get things set up. The first thing we do is we look at what we're dividing by, this x minus 4, and we look at what is being subtracted. If it's x minus whatever number here, we put that here. So I'm going to put a little 4 in kind of this box area up on the top left. If this was x plus 4, and I was dividing by a positive number, then I would put a negative 4 up here. Because you always have to put the opposite of whatever sign is. But in case we have x minus 4, so I put a positive 4 up there. And that's how I start that part. Now I look at what I'm dividing into, and I need to put the coefficients. 3 goes with the x fourth, the negative 5, the negative 21, the negative 30, and the x. I just put the coefficients along the top. So 3, negative 5, negative 21, negative 30, and plus 8. So there's what I'm dividing, the coefficients, and there's what I'm dividing into. Notice we don't use any x's or any variables. That's kind of why it's a shortcut, is it helps us crunch through without having to write everything out. But it still does the same basic math as our long division. So I put a line here to help, again, I'm setting my problem up, organizing it out, and now I'm ready to start synthetic division. The first thing I do is I drop down whatever number is right in front, and I put it down there, the 3. Next, I use my 4. Whatever's up here, you multiply it by this first term down here, 4 times 3, and you write that product over here, 12. We just did round 1. Now I add these two numbers together, negative 5 plus 12 is going to give me 7. And I do 4 times 7 to find out what goes here, 28. I add these two together, negative 21 plus 28 gives me 7. And I multiply 4 times 7 to find out what goes here. I'm going to put an addition sign just so you know, oh, we add those. Negative 30 plus 28 gives me negative 2. 4 times negative 2 gives me negative 8. And 8 plus negative 8 gives me 0. This 0 right here is the remainder. So we can see again, using synthetic division, this divides out really nicely. Now let's kind of wrap up. What do we got here now? Well, this is my constant. This is my x term. This is my x squared. And this is my x to the third. And so when we divide it, it equals 3x to the third plus 7x squared plus 7x minus 2. And there was no remainder, so we just leave it like that. If I divide those two together, this is my result. So there you go. Synthetic division is a little nicer, a little cleaner, because we don't have to write and mess with all the x's until we just put them back in right at the end. By the way, I should put down, this is always our constant. Um, but it only works if you're dividing by a linear factor. There you go. A couple examples, long division, synthetic division. All right, what do we do? We just did a lot of factoring. We did reviewed some factoring, but applied it to bigger polynomials. And we did long division and synthetic division. But a lot of this is taking a polynomial and learning how to break it down into little polynomials all multiplied together. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And I look forward to working with you next week.